Emergency driving is mostly the application of normal good driving practices, smooth steering and throttle, and limiting your dependence on brakes. But if and when 20 miles an hour revs up to 90 for an emergency run, you've got to know a few things extra. And that's what we're getting here at the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Driving Course. Fast turnarounds made safely are a big part of it. Now, we'll start out with just a regular turnaround. If you were heading in a westerly direction and you wanted to turn around and come back east, you knew that you had a driveway up here, the first thing you'd want to do would be sure to place your car in a proper road position. Since it's a left-hand turn, you'll want to stay as far to the right as possible. The next thing you want to do is to come into that driveway. You'll want to use every inch that's available to you. You'll want to at least get into the driveway straight, preferably over to the right-hand side, so that when you back out, you'll have more room to make your turn for that front end to swing around without hitting any obstacles. You'll keep your attention to the front until you have cleared that obstacle. Then you turn around and you look out that rear window. Continue backing across the street until you get to about the last two or three feet before you're going to come to a stop. Now here is the important part of backing up quickly. Since you wanted to come out to your left, you would reverse your steering turning your steering wheel and turning the front wheels to the left prior to coming to a stop. You now put it in gear and come right on out. That is your first turnaround. Then you'll have what is called a semi-bootleg turn. It will be a little quicker than that type of a turn. You will merely come down to the edge of your driveway or the opening that you're going to use to back into. You then steer your car across the street into a 45 degree angle with your opening. That will put you in the proper angle to back into this driveway. You then turn around, you will look out the rear window and start to back into your driveway. You'll want to get in as straight and you'll want to get in as deep as possible. But remember, just prior to stopping, reverse that steering. Get it turned out to the left so you can come right on out. Now your last turnaround is going to be the fastest that you can make. It's called a bootleg turnaround. You merely come right down the center of the street, and as you start to come into your driveway, you must remember to look out the left side of your car, your driver's window, and also the passenger's window. This will allow you to pick up the entire picture. If you looked out the rear window, you wouldn't be able to see the driveway or any oncoming traffic. This is your safest. Look out that window, back right into that driveway, again, getting your steering reversed while the vehicle is still moving. Your vehicle is now stopped, your steering's reversed, you put it in gear and come out. That is your fastest way. On a code three, one thing to realize is that your siren and your emergency lights don't qualify you as an emergency driver any more than a badge and a gun make a competent officer. Our lead vehicle will be proceeding 35 to 45 miles per hour when overtaken by the emergency vehicle that is equipped with the new electronic twin sonic siren. We will have our front windows roll down. And when we hear the siren, we will take the five count, one, two, three, four, five, and when you get to five, you'll raise your hands up in that back window, and I will say no. The microphone at the same time. It has been determined that at 60 miles an hour, the sound of a siren will never reach a car 100 feet in front of you if that car is also going 60 miles an hour. In other words, don't count on clearing the traffic in front of you with a siren. The driver probably won't hear you until you're alongside him. Wow. And just imagine what it would be like with the windows rolled up and loud music blasting. And something else to remember. Your lights on high beam during the day are more visible than your emergency lights. This is our skid pan. On the turns, we have a special soap which we have applied to the track. We add a little bit of water. And at higher speeds, of course, that's where you really get the effects of weight transfer, which translates into skidding. So we can't get very much traction. So we can put the car into a slide simulating a higher speed turn at a much slower speed. On this track, we're going to be teaching the basic techniques of maximum vehicle control by the proper use of road position, proper speed, proper steering control, proper throttle control. Now, 
As far as road position, what we're trying to do is straighten the turns out a little bit, minimizing weight transfer, and keep the car as flat as possible throughout the turn. When you get into a slide, remember you must steer in the direction of the skid. So if you go into a slide and the back of your car is sliding out to the right, you would counter steer for the skid by steering to the right. If you slide to the left, you would counter steer by steering to the left. Speed control. It's probably the most important thing about driving because if you drive too fast, you can't stop the car, you can't steer the car. If we go into that turn too fast and then decide to put our brakes on while we're in the turn, we're going to slide right off the road. He hits the brakes, even though he wants to turn it to the left and to the right, he can't make it. It just pushed him right off. He should be correcting now, he waits too long, he corrects now, doesn't get it, he goes off the lip, and as a result, he blew it. He turns too soon, just a little bit too soon. He's already got his wheels corrected for the slide, and as a result, the back end pushes the front end right off. Like so. Too fast, uses the brakes, doesn't correct soon enough, corrects too soon, and each time you go right off the track. This is what we'd like for you to do, this position here. As soon as your back end and now here's the right way. As soon as your back end starts to slide, and before it's gone too far, start correcting by steering in the direction of the slide. And he negotiates the turn all the way around. Once it goes into a slide, we must control the back of our car with the throttle. Because if we give it too much power, the car will spin out. If we don't give it any power, we won't have any control over the back end you're actually sort of steering the back of the car with the power. The little yellow signs you see throughout the track are the speeds that you're going to be traveling. Now, if we told you to go out there and drive this course as fast as you could or just go out and drive it, most of you wouldn't have any problems. The object of this is not says drive fast or high speed driving, but precision driving. Okay, we'll go onto the track. The idea about driving an emergency car is to get there safely. While you're decelerating, you're going into this taper. You have two inches on each side of the car. So anytime that you drive through a area such as this, it's real narrow, guide off of, you know, off of your left front fender and the narrowest part on your left, being that large cone. Now this serpentine represents lane changes, similar to a freeway. We're moving over one lane. And we must control our speed at the same time, a steady, smooth speed. I'll put it on 30 miles an hour, and I'll make the turns just as smooth as I can, using the principle of two-hand steering. All we're making is lane changes from the number four lane all the way through the number one lane, which is a fast lane on a freeway. Now, as we come out of the serpentine, we have in front of us a left-hand turn. We must be concerned about road position and our speed. If you go into the turn too fast, you're going to lose control and you're going to go off the road. So when you brake the car, put your foot on that brake and bring it down hard. Then you enter your turn. Now, as soon as you get off of your brake, you should go to your throttle to apply power to your rear wheels. We're going too fast, so we brake it down on the throttle, come into your apex, maintaining a steady speed. Minimizing the transfer of weight, keeping the car as flat as possible. Here we must break down again. We're too fast, so we break it down hard to a safe speed. Again, a left turn. We have the correct road position. We're coming into the apex. In the middle of the turn somewhere, we have what we call an apex. This is the tightest part of the turn where we have the most centrifugal force. Now, if it's a left turn, the apex will be on the left, somewhere in that turn. If it's a right turn, it'll be on the right. Now, another factor we must be concerned with is road positions. If you have a left turn, we will set up our car by entering from the right side. If it's a right turn, we'll set up by being on the left. And then as you exit the turn, you'll let the car drift out in the direction of your centrifugal force. We bring it into the apex, the tightest part of the turn, and then we exit the turn in the direction of weight shift or weight transfer, which is always outside. Another left turn, we come into the curve to our apex, finish the turn outside, 
right back into another left turn, into the apex, exit the turn in the direction of centrifugal force. Yes, emergency driving calls for the right techniques and something more. First, know yourself. What you can handle at the wheel in terms of reaction time and coordination. No two drivers are exactly the same. Second, know your vehicle. No two cars are alike either. Get the feel of what it can do and what it cannot do. With that combination of knowledge and the right techniques, you can get where you're headed in a hurry and all in one piece.